Hey, this is Kyle from Seven Sisters, and you're listening to What's Metal. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are standing on the street somewhere in, in, in Göppingen, close to the legendary Zille. And uh, Kyle is here with us from Seven Sisters, and uh, he's going to tell us all about the band. Um, most pressing question, first of all, how many sisters do you have? I have two sisters. Yeah, not seven. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we've actually played some shows before, and people have, like, their faces have just dropped when we've walked out onto the stage because we are not seven sisters as they were expecting in four ugly blokes from uh, from west london so yeah <laughs> it's a bit of a misleading name but hey yeah that, that's what i thought actually yeah, that's that, that's a later question actually um would, would people you know know what you're going what you're going to perform on stage yeah they probably are expecting some chicks you know <laughs> to yeah. perform and seven of them right yeah. yeah okay that's funny um yeah but the name wh wh where does that come from um there's no real exciting story i'm afraid i so i used to live in london and I was going to a festival called Live Evil um, and I was getting on a train and I saw it on the front of a tube train, the, the underground train in London and yeah, Seven Sisters. It's a place in London which I've never been to before and I still haven't been to <laughs> but um, yeah, I just thought it would make a cool band name and then after that I sort of realised there's quite a lot of uh, stories to do with the Pleiades and the Seven Sisters in Greek mythology and of course there's the cliffs in Dover as well in, in England and there's, there seems to be a lot surrounding the Seven Sisters in, in various sort of folklore tales and things. Yeah, yeah. So it was accidentally quite a cool name but uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's literally it. I saw it on a train and I was like, oh yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. I, I guess it also strikes fear, fear into the heart of, of, of young boys, you know, there's the worst nightmare to have seven sisters, I suppose, no? Yeah, yeah, that would be a quite a terrifying experience growing up with seven sisters. Yeah, definitely. All right, so you're on tour with, uh, with Riot City. Um, how are things going so far? They're going really well. Um, it's always a bit of a nerve-wracking experience when you first meet up on the first day, just because you're not sure how things are going to go and how you're going to get along. And obviously everyone has to be professional and operate in that manner, but we actually get along really well as uh, as friends. And I think we're becoming quite close friends now. And there's a, a really good sort of healthy, not, not competition, but we're both keeping each other on our toes, you know, because Riot City are so good live. If we don't turn up and we don't play a good show, it's going to be even more apparent when they come on stage. So it's like we're trying to keep each other as in the best form as we possibly can. And yeah, it's working out really well so far. Even though musically you are not necessarily comparable, I would say, right? Yeah, I think we're we're quite different. Obviously, we fall under the heavy metal bracket, that umbrella. But um, yeah, in terms of style, they're much more aggressive, obviously more closer to the speed metal side of things. Um, but I think it's a nice balanced package, actually, because, you know, you have us and we have much more dynamic songs and then they have the aggressive stuff later on. And yeah, it's good. It's working out well. Yeah. So um, one thing that's probably um, a little bit unique or special about Seven Sisters would be that each of your albums comes with comes with a kind of like a concept or a bigger story. Maybe you could let our, our listeners know what that is all about. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, it started mainly because it's like a, it's a good songwriting tool for me. Um, it's quite difficult to start with just a completely blank canvas. So we give ourselves a story to to write towards and it kind of helps shape the the sonic aesthetics of, of the album that we're trying to make. Um, we always think in terms of albums, I've always, as a writer, I'm always thinking about the whole, the bigger picture rather than just, you know, the individual song. And I think the stories help us do that. And it's fun, you know, I'm, most of my favorite con uh, albums are concept albums anyway. So I think it was just a, a natural choice for us. Are there any bigger names that would be kind of like an example that you could name as um, as an inspiration? Or sure, I, I suppose the most obvious one would be uh, King Diamond and and Queen Drake as well. With you know Operation Mindcrime is definitely in my top five albums of all time, regardless of genre. Um, and just even even things in like classical music, you know, they they try to paint a picture over the course of you know, maybe 20 or 30 minutes of music. And it's it's all about, like I said, that, that sort of bigger picture and evoking different emotions at different periods of time. And it evolves for the listener. So I've always been drawn to that side of things. So when you're writing music to kind of like accompany a story or match a story, does that mean that sometimes you have to drop ideas that otherwise would be pretty cool? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Maybe not drop, you know, you never 
and like completely throw away an idea. It will probably get used at some point, but there's definitely moments where a, an idea will lend itself to the subject of the song better than another one. Um, but normally I'll have like an idea in mind of what I want the song to be like, you know, for example, if I wanted it just to be, I want this song to be a heavy song at a slower tempo, I will just start thinking of ideas that are that fit that description rather than just writing anything and then hoping something comes up. Yeah. Okay, so the current album is out since quite a while and uh, my impression is that stories are getting bigger, right? Because this is only part one of a bigger thing, right? M maybe you could uh, give us some details about that album? Sure. Because I mean, we're obviously going to play a couple of songs, obviously as well, right? Uh, so people will hear it, but um, maybe give us some background info on, on that album. Yeah, of course. Um, so the story is is a story that I've come up with myself. Um, I'm a huge fan of, of sci-fi, and I, I like to read sci-fi novels, especially the older stuff. So I wanted to try and write my own little sci-fi story. Uh, I came up with an idea for a planet that was a library, essentially, but like in, a, in the sense that it is just a huge temple that stores information, and then it becomes a very political important point in you know the Andromeda galaxy which is where it's all set um, in the heart of this planet there is a, an alien sort of consciousness trapped in a crystal and that is like the guiding force initially behind the planet being created and then it kind of gets it gets forgotten about and you know life goes on on this planet and then the main character in the story uh, discovers this alien and then events unfold and lots of secrets are uncovered and you know th like I said this this is only part one it's going to be part one of two that happened because I was explaining the story that I had in mind to to the, the other guys in the band and they were like there's no way we can fit this on one album um, we'll, we'll have to do two which I'm you know I'm pleased that they were so willing to do something like that that I wasn't the one that suggested it even though I was sort of thinking it myself they were straight away just like yeah we should do a double album you know a two-part album and extend the story over that so it's it's nice to spread our wings that way and, and sort of dip our toes more into that progressive side of things. So yeah, I mean that's probably also helpful side of having a band name that doesn't you know narrow you down so much, right? Because the previous albums were focusing a bit more on mythology, legends, and so on, right? So you can pretty, with that band name you can do pretty much what you want, right? Whereas for King Diamond, yeah, people would expect a horror story, right? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, Seven Sisters, it could, yeah, it could be anything. It could be any genre of music, um, which which helps us. And you know, we're not interested in writing the same album twice. You know, we'd like to make some sort of progression each time, which I think is, you know, if anybody listening is familiar with our music, they, they probably realize that themselves. You know, the the first album. From the second to this to our third album, the, there's quite a big difference, I think, in in terms of the sound, and we still remain ourselves at the core. Um, it helps with me being the singer. That's like a thread that that weaves through all of it. But there's new ideas coming in, and maybe new influences. And yeah, I think uh, it, it's exciting to be like that because if we're going to be a band, you know, potentially for the rest of our lives and keep working, then we don't want to keep repeating ourselves. We need some sort of progression. Yeah, but I, I mean, even though there is progression in the music, I think that in a live situation, if you would mix up those songs, they would gel in qu quite well, you know? I, I think it would still be like an authentic show. It's not like that you would have a break just because the song is from a different album, I would, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. It's still very much like twin guitar, heavy metal, um, melody-driven stuff. And it's very much us, even when we're playing, you know, like we will tonight, we're playing songs from all three albums um, and it, it all sounds like us. So j just one more thing on, uh, on, on the lyrics, um, because I forgot that earlier now. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, as, as, as you also said, um, you know, each album has a different story and the different things, you know, sci-fi now, it was more legends before. Like one, one concept or at least one, one topic that I find reappears in the lyric is, maybe I'm wrong, but um, yeah, the aspect of, of knowledge and wisdom and the power that you get through that somehow. D do you see yourself being kind of like dragged to those themes in, in, in some way? Yeah, I, maybe not consciously, but yeah, now you mention it, I suppose. Uh, the theme of the shadow of a fallen star is, is absolutely that sort of uh, the acquisition of knowledge and everybody's perception of what is the truth. And maybe going on a journey to discover what that means for yourself. And especially in, in the age that we live in, 
you know, the, it, it doesn't take much to realize that the great library is just a metaphor for the internet, you know, and the, uh, the internet is this infinite tool of, of, of wisdom. If you, you know, gonna, if you want to learn anything, you can learn about absolutely anything, but it's the way that it is used is obviously not for that. It's for something else. And it's, it's can be quite sinister in, in points. So yeah, I guess it's an interesting subject for me because the truth is so easily, you know, like covered over, it's hidden behind a veil of basically just what you see in your own echo chamber online, you know, and you never quite know if what you're reading is in earnest or if it is with an agenda. And yeah, I think it's important for people to keep that in mind when they're reading the news or just developing opinions of their own. So yeah, it's, it's something that I think about quite a lot. Um, so I think that your music could, and especially some of your songs, songs could uh, appeal to a much wider audience that you might than, than what you might have right now. Um, I mean, le le let's assume, <laughs> you know, uh, more people would know about your music and uh, your, your, your fan base might grow. Is there a certain limit to this where you would say, okay, no, this is going to be too much or what would you think oh, my band can grow indefinitely? I mean, obviously on the extreme side, you would have Stadium Rock somehow, yeah? yeah. Um, it, and, and right now you probably have more traditional old school audience, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess a, a way to answer that question is I, we would never sacrifice what we want to do musically in order to grow. It, well, grow, you know, in inverted commas and, and gain a, a bigger audience. Um, I want to write music that people enjoy, absolutely. I, like, I want to write music that I enjoy first and foremost. Uh, if other people like it, then that's a, that's a bonus. But yeah, I, I I I agree. I do think that our thing, our music can be would be appreciated by a more general, uh, widespread heavy metal audience. I don't. I think it's some of the songs are quite accessible, um, but that's not done in a in an attempt to gain more fans. It's just it's just the music that we want to write. We like I said, we would never sacrifice doing what we want to do musically, yeah. for the sake of of becoming a bigger band or whatever that means. So the current album uh, was released through uh, Dissonance Records, right? Or Dissonance Productions, I can't remember. Which is a UK-based um, label that I know personally only for, um, or through re-releases mostly, yeah? yeah. So um, I wasn't aware that they have their own bands and release um, current album. Because the previous stuff was on High Roller, maybe? Yeah. So um, maybe give us some, some info on that. And are you happy with how they promote the, the album? Sure. Uh, yeah, our first album was on High Roller Records. Um, that's you know obviously it was a big deal for us because a lot of our contemporaries and our favorite bands that are about today have, have released music on high roller records um, the thing came about with dissonance because yeah you're right initially they were like a, a back catalog label they bought up a lot of like extreme metal and things like that but um, the the owner of the label at the time decided that he wanted to create a, a British record label that had Uh, basically exclusively these British bands doing classic metal I think you know he had some of the older bands he had Diamond Head for a little while and, and Grim Reaper and and now Tokyo Blade as well and then us Amulet Eliminator uh, Toledo Steel and Neuron Spoiler and that was like the f the the beginnings of that um, it's since been bought by another record label uh, Cherry Red Records who are st just a re-release uh, label and yeah it's I mean It's it's okay, I suppose the the work that they do. I, obviously, I wish we they would do more, just like every band wishes their record label would do more. I'm not gonna badmouth them or anything, but it's it's uh, it works for now, and we still have one more album to do with them. So yeah. So uh, I'm nearly done with all my questions. There's there's one left. Uh, that's always the last question that we have. So okay. Show's called What's Metal. So what what do you think is metal? Can you describe this, or um, is there a definition for it? Man, what is metal? That's quite a big question. Um, okay, if so, if somebody asked me what is what does heavy metal sound like, I would show them Judas Priest, Scream for Vengeance. I think that's an excellent example of what heavy metal sounds like to me, and I think to what people would expect it to sound like. However, what is heavy metal to me? Um, I don't know. It's just the it's the biggest subculture in the world, right? It's the it's just like this elephant in the room that nobody likes to talk about. 
um, to me, it's like a, a big family. You know, all of my friends, well, a lot of my friends, my almost my entire life revolves around heavy metal in some way or other. And it's become something much bigger than, than the sum of its parts for me personally anyway. And from like a songwriting point of view, I think it's a really exciting palette to work from because heavy metal has so much in it over the period that it's existed. Um, there's progressive elements, there's very melodic elements, there's very extreme aggressive elements, and there's so much to work with as a musician, but still within like a, a, a compact package, you know, that's accessible to people. So I hope that answers the question a little bit. <laughs> Well, we let our listeners decide, all right? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs>